A report by the Russian newspaper Vedemosti says Russia is preparing to launch a new military force in Africa, dubbed the African Legion, which will replace the controversial Wagner group of mercenaries. Sources close to the Russian Ministry of Defense say the African Legion will be activated this summer and will operate in five African countries, Burkina Faso, Libya, Mali, the Central African Republic, and Niger. According to the U.S. State Department, the African Legion is planning to carry out large-scale military operations operations on the continent to counteract Western influences. VOA senior analyst Mohamed El Shinari discussed this development with David Desroches, associate professor at the National Defense University. Well, this is basically an effort to get the benefits of the Wagner Group without the drawbacks. So the Wagner Group initially operated sort of below the table. The Russian government denied that it was part of Russia. They said, oh, no, this is just an independent group. But, of course, you saw the problems with that independence when the Wagner Group broke with the Russian MOD. So in spite of the fact that the Wagner Group was not too effective in Ukraine, it was a lucrative and Uh, militarily effective force in most of Africa. So Russia doesn't want to give that capability up, so they're trying to reconstitute it in a way that's easier to control. The sources said the African Legion will be directly subordinate to the Ministry of Defense. Russia created the African Legion to replace the Wagner Group, which faced, as you said, legal and political challenges for its activities in Africa. Would that change give some legitimacy to Russian military presence in Africa? I don't think so. So I think that what this is trying to do is to recruit a high level of person, soldier, potential soldier to conduct operations in Africa. The challenge here is going to be that we've seen, you know, the Russian manpower shortages in Ukraine where people aren't really eager to serve. I think that what may happen with an MOD affiliated group is that people may join up thinking they're going to go to Mali, which is, you know, relatively low intensity conflict, and then find somebody saying, well, you know, this is an MOD element. You're going to go to Ukraine. You know, they're having a hard time getting manpower power for. So there is a potential problem with this. But again, the primary concern from driving Russia, I believe, is their desire to have a force that is more deployable than regular Russian military and has a high level of capability, as Wagner Group did, but without the independence of Wagner Group. Russia had clear economic and strategic motives for its involvement in Africa, such as securing mineral resources, expanding its influence, undermining Western interests, and promoting authoritarian How could the U.S. help African countries who see Russian military involvement as a threat to peace and security in the continent? Yeah, this is a good question. So the countries that Wagner Group is operating in are either failed states or they're states that have undergone coups. They're basically dictatorships. So it's really hard to see how the United States and other uh, like-minded partners and allies are going to be able to engage. For example, in Mali, you know, you had a significant U.N. and French-run assistance mission for years that was trying to to operate, you know, a counterinsurgency against Islamist guerrillas. When the Wagner Group goes in after the expulsion of the French and UN forces, what we've seen are basically massacres of um, uh, different tribes. I don't know how it's a real challenge because I don't think that there is both the will or the capability to engage in these regimes, which are, they're extremely questionable. And uh, their commitment to the goals that Western countries have, you know, in terms of good governance, those are not quite there. Uh, It seems like they're trying to win the insurgency by killing their way out of it. And that very rarely happens successfully. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is planning to visit four African countries as the Biden administration tries to keep its eyes on all corners of the world while being consumed by crises in Ukraine, the Mideast, and the Red Sea. The State Department says Blinken will go to Cape Verde Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Angola starting Sunday for talks focused on regional security, conflict prevention, democracy, promotion, and trade. The Associated Press says Blinken's Africa trip comes as the United States is increasingly nervous about its relationships on the continent. In addition, the U.S. and China are in a battle for influence throughout Africa. In response to heightened security risks in the Red Sea Gulf of Aden region, Musk, the Danish shipping giant, announced on Friday the temporary suspension of bookings to Djibouti from several key regions, including Asia, the Middle East, Oceania, East Africa, and South Africa. 
the decision impacts Maskey's Blue Nile Express service, a vital route connecting virus ports. In a statement, Maskey highlighted the ongoing volatility in and around the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, emphasizing that all available intelligence signals a significantly high security risk. As a precautionary measure, the company has decided to omit the Djibouti as well as Jeddah and King Abdullah port in Saudi Arabia from its Blue Nile Express service with immediate effect. The Blue Nile Express typically links ports in the United Arab Emirates, Oman, India, Djibouti, and Saudi Arabia. Despite the suspension of the Djibouti from its service, Musk assured stakeholders that it does not anticipate an impact on carrying capacity. This move by Musk reflects the challenges posed by the complex geopolitical and security landscape in the region. Shipping companies often adjust their routes and operations based on security assessments to ensure the safety of their vessels, cargo, and crew. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.